there are about 43 million communists in the world today. Individuals who claim that they are members of some communist party. Not one of these was born a communist. Every one of them chose to become a communist at some stage in their lives. They were convinced of the correctness of communist doctrine, of the value of communist programs, and the virtue of the communist objective. Uh, communism has succeeded or failed in most countries in accordance with its ability to recruit people to be communists, members of the Communist Party, and to dedicate their lives to advance the communist program and work for the communist conquest of their own country and ultimately the communist conquest of the entire world. Uh, who are these people who are recruited to communism? Uh, where are we most likely to find them? What group of people seem to be most susceptible to the appeal of communism? Uh, what arguments are used to convince them? And how do they become communists? Contrary to what many people think, the great recruiting ground of the communist is not amongst the working class and the poor. Communism as such has always had very little appeal indeed to the workers. The great recruiting ground of the communists is the college and university. Uh, this is easily proved by a survey of the world communist leadership. Practically every major world communist figure was recruited to communism while he was a student at some university. Uh, Karl Marx uh, was attracted to uh, the doctrines which he ultimately uh, formalized into the doctrines of Marxism while he was a university student. Uh, Frederick Engels was a university student when he became associated with Marx. Lenin embraced Marxism while he was a university student. Stalin became a communist uh, while he was a student at a theological seminary. Uh, if we take the communist leadership of China, we find exactly the same pattern. Mao Zedong uh, became a communist while he was student librarian at the National University in Peking. King. Uh, Zhou Enlai, uh, the premier, became a communist uh, while he was a student at a French university in Paris. Uh, the commander-in-chief of the Red Army, Chu Tai, became a communist while he was a student at a Prussian military academy in Germany. Uh, so it goes on. Fidel Castro, uh, after he had established communist power within Cuba, came out and announced, I have been a Marxist-Leninist since my student days. But I hid it, for had I not done so, I could not have brought the revolution to a successful conclusion. So the group that is susceptible to communist recruitment is uh, the group of students uh, in the prime of their intellectual life exploring the world of ideas, gathered in some college or university. Another illustration of uh, this communist appeal to the students is that within the United States, uh, the Communist Party has had to colonize the unions, as it is called, by taking graduates from universities and sending them as manual workers into the factory. Uh, because they couldn't recruit manual workers to positions of leadership within the Communist Party. Why does communism appeal to these students uh, while they're at universities? Communism recruits in terms of two things, a grievance and a vision. The grievance convinces the student of a situation 
which is wrong and should be corrected. The vision uh, presents a future situation which is most attractive and promises to cure the grievance. Uh, the grievances uh, of which young people are conscious are frequently very numerous. Uh, young people, uh, particularly bright intellectual students, are usually very idealistic emotionally. They're very, very sensitive to the evils in the world around them. Though this is often associated with a peculiar insensitivity to the evil within themselves. Since every society in this world, being made up of imperfect people, has various imperfections, there are always grievances which can stimulate the concern and indignation of these students. The situation is wrong and it must be corrected. The vision that attracts is a twofold vision. Uh, it is the promise that communism makes to these young students. Communism promises that they may participate firstly in a grandiose program of world conquest and moreover a program that is certain to succeed. The communists have plans and they say that their plans are guaranteed success by history itself. Plans to conquer every country and ultimately to conquer the entire world. Uh, this is a, a tremendous project. Uh, to be a participant in this project would appeal to many people. Uh, the second phase of the communist promise is not as well known as the first one. Communism doesn't regard world conquest as an end in itself. Uh, theoretically at least, they're not just seeking for power. World conquest is but a step on the pathway to an even greater goal, and that goal is the regeneration of all mankind, the perfection of human nature, the creation of human character and human intelligence uh, superb, superior to anything mankind has yet known. Communism promises that uh, when its program is mature, that individuals will be so perfect that all the necessity uh, of control that exists in the world today will disappear uh, because everyone will work uh, because the impulse of his own nature tells him to work. Everyone will give because it's better to give than to receive. Uh, the evil characteristics of human nature so manifest today in the form of greed, lust, cruelty, uh, selfishness. Uh, these characteristics will just have disappeared. And when human nature has become perfect, then uh, the mechanisms of control, such as the police force, uh, the military forces will become quite unnecessary and disappear. Uh, because everybody is so intrinsically generous and works so skillfully and so willingly, uh, there is abundance, universal abundance created. So there's no need for any compulsory giving, so income tax and everything like that just disappears. And finally a society of abundance and beauty and harmony is created characterized by the slogan from each according to his ability to each according to his need. Now, it must be stressed that this is the ultimate communist vision, which has not been realized anywhere, which is the end point which will hypothetically be reached. And uh, it's a vision which attracts many of these university students. However, the question is not is the vision attractive and is it good, 
but can it be realised? Uh, the communists say yes. And they have a program which convinces a number of these students. When asked how they propose to conquer the world, uh, they say by science. Science has transformed the material world in which we live. Science has transformed the world of agriculture, uh, the world of animal husbandry. We're going to use science to perform its greatest task, to change mankind himself. They then proceed to give their three fundamental scientific laws. The first one is there is no God. They're unashamedly atheistic in theory and in practice. When they deny God, they simultaneously deny every virtue and value that originates with God. They wipe the slate clean. Uh, all moral codes are abolished and they're in a position where they can create a new set of values in tune with their basic beliefs and their future objectives. The first law is there is no God. The second law is that man is a material being. Matter in motion, nothing more, subject to the laws of chemistry and physics, like all other material machines uh, in being. The third law is a little more complex, but to try and summarize it, it states that the qualities of the human mind, the human character and human personality are derived from the prevailing economic environment. Now, once you accept these three basic laws, then uh, the argument that the present economic environment of capitalism has created evil human natures and social uh, problems such as uh, misery, war, uh, unemployment, uh, racial discrimination, it's easy to accept uh, this statement that all the ills of mankind are due to capitalism. And from then, uh, it's easy to go on to the idea that if capitalism could be destroyed uh, and a new environment uh, created, all these evils could be eliminated from mankind. And so, on the basis of a materialist philosophy, these students are attracted to the concept of being identified with this program to regenerate and remake mankind. And it appeals to their intellectual pride. There are many unfortunate developments from this theory which we will consider in a future lecture.